get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Dude, the Rhino might be back, bro. Football. Hello there, football-loving friends. This is Trenches with Boone on Purple Daily. Phil Mackey and my 10-plus year NFL veteran friend, Alex Boone. Uh, we missed last week because I was uh, busy tending to my ailing father who passed away. I appreciate your patience. The audience has been amazing. But we are back here to dive into life advice, football advice, whatever people really need from the Rhino. Did you just Alex say life Boone. advice? Stop it. Mm-hmm. Phil, you know I love you, and I'm sorry. High rankings. You never know where this show is uh, is going to go. You never no, know. Don't do that. Were you watching, by the way? It was so spoiler alert. We're recording this on Monday night. The Patriots tonight. They're just like going back and forth now. But so Mac Jones started off terribly, and then uh, Bailey Zappi came in and just like threw two t- two touchdown drives immediately. And then I think they might have gone back to Mac Jones at some point. And then back to ba- we have a we have a bona fide quarterback controversy in New England right now that's happening on my it. screen to my right here. I love so. it. This whole situation is just incredible. Guys coming out of nowhere. I mean, Belichick just probably loving it to death, but the whole offense is not because when you're switching guys around, you have to go from one guy to the next guy back to the first guy, and you're like, wait a minute, what? What just happened? It's it's horrible. Belichick's like, if we can find an Dude. obscure third string backup quarterback <laughs> right. to take the reins. This is what ideal. we need. Yes. <laughs> uh, dude, dude, the same problem is happening right now in Tampa, too. Like, they have two guards that are rotating. And, I mean, if you want to talk about absurd, that's abs- – like, find a position for him. You can become the next tight end, okay, dude? We don't need to rotate you in. This isn't Pop Warner. You know what I'm saying? Like, could you imagine – you know the problem's going to be there's only going to be 10 guys in the huddle. They're always going to silence. Like, I thought it's your turn. It's, your, it's my turn? <laughs> We've got four guards in the huddle right now. Somebody, oh, somebody, God. please go back to the sideline. Um, so I'll give you my. Uh, there's no Vikings game to react to this week. Although I guess but there's some things from the Dolphins game we can get into. I've got some film for you later on oh, in the yeah. show. We're Love gonna it. fire some people's asses here, uh, but I'm gonna give you my just general take on the state of the Vikings, and then you tell me if I'm an idiot, like here we usual go. here. All right. Here we go. The NFC is absurdly wide open this season, and the Vikings are off to a better start than I think anyone predicted at 5-1. and one. There's a bunch of things during self-scouting week here to, to clean up, but there's only five teams above 500 in the NFC, and there's going to be seven playoff teams, and that list of five includes the Seahawks and the Giants, two teams that nobody thought would be playoff teams. And so I guess my, my main point here is, or my main uh, question is, why can't the Vikings clean some stuff up and make a run here? I mean, it's not like there's six, you know, daunting teams in front of them here. This is, if there's any year to just make a run and do something, go get to 12 or 13 regular season wins and play a home playoff game or two, right. why can't it be the Vikings? I don't know why I can't. I'm confused. Was I against you on this argument? No, I'm talking more just like to the masses. I'm with like, you. Like, why can't it be the Vikings this year? No, it, it should be the Vikings. I mean, Number one, let's look what Green Bay is doing. Our number one nemesis, right? Like, we got to just get over Green Bay. They've lost two in a row, right? First, you lose to Taylor Heineke, who we all know how much I love Taylor. I know you love him, too. I mean, just the whole, like, put, didn't he? Didn't he, like, put his foot through a glass door in training camp? Tore his Achilles. I, it was the year Were I got you there here. during that? <laughs> Dude, it's the year I get here, and they're like, wait till you meet Taylor. Like, you guys are going to hit it off so He's in an air well. cast right now because right? he got drunk and kicked a glass door. But they don't tell me. Guy. They didn't tell me. They were just like, wait till you meet him. So I meet him, and I'm like, dude, what's with the uh, what's with the gimp leg? What's wrong with you? He starts laughing, and he's like, man, it's a funny story. Well, it's not really funny, but it's a story. He's like, you know, I'm on, I'm on vacation like Myrtle Beach and got locked out of the house, and, you know, shit happens. I was like, dude, I guess shit does happen. Kicks the door, tears his Achilles. I mean, the kid's phenomenal. You love his attitude. You love his effort. There's times where he makes questionable throws, and he's one of those guys that you got to look at every now and then in the third quarter like, bro. Not doing this with you today, okay? Enough of that nonsense. But I love him to death. And I think going out and beating Aaron Rodgers is exactly what I wanted to see. I'm so sick of seeing that guy all over the place whining about everything, looking downfield, bitching about this, bitching about that. Like, eventually someone's just going to hit him on his own team. But then he comes back out this week and loses again. You're like, dude, this guy is just rough. Just, And then you start thinking about the Vikings. You're like, man, they are in a really good spot. Like, I will say this last game against Miami, Zadarius Smith has showed exactly what you should be afraid of. I think Ed Donatel is doing a fabulous job now of just moving people around. And you look at 
this week with Arizona, like the biggest problem that they have is the core of their interior, right? Like offensively, I am not a Kyler Murray fan. I will be very open about that. Like I think this dude whines and complains just like Aaron Rodgers, and I'm sick of seeing it from quarterbacks. Like you're like, okay, dude, I got it. You're upset. Nobody knows what you're upset about. You're the one that threw that ball completely over his head. He was not supposed to run that any different. That's a clear stick route. Like I don't get what everyone's so mad about. But you look at their offense, and if you're going to go after him, do the core. And Zadarius Smith last week and what he's been able to do and the ability to put him all around and then Daniil starts showing up. I mean, like, guys are starting to feed off this. And then offensively, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of what they did last week. I talked to you earlier about the two-man routes. I mean, dude, I just lost the fifth-grade championship game. I've seen enough two-man routes. I want to see oh, something. What? what? You were beating Stop. everyone 60 Stop. to nothing. What happened? We played our own team. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, we grow, we grow them big here in EP. What can I say? <laughs> no, we ended up playing the other EP team. We lost 12-7. to 7. It was um, it was probably one of the most heated games I've ever played. But I want everybody to know this and, I, and truly understand this. All season, I kept my mouth shut when people would talk to me. Like, my kids were asking me, like, why was I so heated? And I was like, you know, when people – would people yell at me from the sidelines? If I don't respond, to me, you're not even there with me. Like, I'm doing my own thing and I'm having fun because the kids would always ask me, you never talk back to these coaches? I'm like, no. I don't even hear them. They can complain and whine all they want. We get into this championship game, and it's me and Marquise Gray. Do you know who Marquise Gray is? Yeah, I uh, I went to college, like, overlapped a year, I think, when he was there. We both went to the University Love of Minnesota. Him. He was the quarterback, and then he became, mm-hmm. like, a tight end in the NFL, for, yep, right? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And uh, him and I both actually work out at a training house, which is great. It's so much fun together. Wait, so, so he's to, co- he was coaching the other team? He, he's got twins that play on the other team. They're studs, right? And so we're going into this game, and – before the game, I just I knew the vibe, dude. Like I was just gonna get into a fight with somebody, so it had to be Marquise. So he starts chirping about something, something really little, and all of a sudden I just like full force go at him. Like I'm like, dude, enough! <laughs> and everyone's like, whoa! And I'm like, it's that type of day. <laughs> so my kids were like, well, why'd you go so hard at Coach Gray? I was like, because he's a worthy adversary. Like that's one guy that if he's got something to say, I'm listening to what you're saying. Like I respect you enough as a coach and as a player to be like okay, I'm going to have to fight this. I can't just ignore you and pretend like you don't exist like some of the other kids are around me, but I have to give it to him. So for anyone that was there, just know that I love Marquise and I love Coach Santi. They're great guys. I only got in their face and we only got to blows because I respect them and that's how brothers are supposed to be, right? Like I remember my coaches growing up, they used to fight everybody. I thought it was awesome. Would you, uh, wait, I think there's, there's probably a few Purple Daily listeners that would pay admission to come watch your fifth grade teams yeah, play was- football. It was so can we can we run a business off this with the, with the city of Eden Prairie Care? Dude, we go <laughs> our side next hustle, year. Dude. I'm telling you, next year it was we had a lot of fun this year, and it was great. You know what? The boys we lost, and they learned a big lesson. And sometimes you don't always win when you should. And guess what? You got to move on. You got to eat it and work all year next year to do it again. I'm I excited. thought the coach, from what I heard, my sources in Eden Prairie football said the coaching preparation left a little bit to be desired this week. <laughs> I don't put it on the players, but you know. You can spend the entire offseason self-scouting your uh, your film I preparation. I ate that game, dude. You know I did because there was one play I wanted to run, and I didn't run it. And I swear to God, when G-Ro was like, dude, sometimes it's the little things that will eat at you, he was not wrong. And I, for to this day, I'm like, why didn't I just run that one? Play? You left a club in the bag. Oh, my gosh. Dude. Correct. So, anyways, yeah. back to our game with the Vikings. What they're doing on defense, I love it. Like the D-line, they're moving around. They're getting exotic. They're getting crazy with it offensively. I'm looking at this, and I'm like, you know, I'm watching this, and I just don't know what I don't like about it. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I don't see enough Dalvin. That's my biggest issue. And I think that when you look at this Miami game, it starts to scare me because, yeah, I get it. You won the game. That's great. Jalen Waddle fumbles that ball. He doesn't fumble that ball. I don't know where we are. But we're 5-1. and one. They, They're happy. But when you're looking around, I'm like, man, why did he go so protective? of Kirk that entire game like I felt like everything was set up off the big play action I mean we got tight ends blocking real defensive ends that are giving up sacks and we're still not being able to protect him so at that point I'm like why are we not just unloading this five wide okay instead of letting you put nine men in the box and my center has to figure out the mic the right guard can't block anybody today so the center is really blocking two people all day like you just put this huge strain on people and then eventually you should just be like you know what Clip books out the door, spread them out five wide. I want to see you bring eight now. Go ahead, bring your eight guys now, and I'll see. We'll start carving you up. We'll start dicing you up. But instead, it was kind of like we're going to keep this game plan going. Like, that's just the one thing I see that I'm like, listen, 
it's not working in your max protection, spread them out. Make them work for it. Make them show you what they're doing. Make them really, truly cover you. Make them kind of sit back and go, what are they going to do with Justin? What are they going to do with Thielen? Like, there was several times I watched these two-man routes, and I'm like, dude, what? I don't know. I don't I don't get what's going on here. I'm, I'm rolling with it. There was one time where Thielen ran a whip back, and it, he comes out open. And Kirk is, like, standing there looking at him. And they even show it from Kirk's point of view from right behind. And you're like, dude, throw it. Throw it. And then he took a sack and you're like, dude, you were in the nine-man protection. How is anybody getting near the quarterback on this? Like, there's just things like this that are starting to show up. And I've told you guys before, I don't talk about the silly things, the false starts, the holdings. That's just moronic. Eventually, you're going to talk, and we're talking about it right now, is if they want to go to the playoffs – and you want to be good in the playoffs, what do you have to do? Like, these are the things that's like, hey, these couple things have showed up. Now teams are going to go, hey, why didn't they go open? Why didn't mm-hmm. they widen everybody out? Why aren't they feeding the ball to Dalvin Moore? Maybe he's hurt. Maybe he's not. Maybe whatever, whatever. But I'm looking around, and I'm like, man, I think the Vikings right now are in like the bottom five of rushing attempts. And it's like, dude, we should be somewhere in the middle. Nobody said you had to that. be in the top. Nobody said you had to be in the top anymore. You could be in the middle. But eventually it's like, when you put it all together, I feel like you need more Delvin, don't you? Like, you need more of that power stick. Give it to him. Like, just let him go loose Good one ball. game. Have fun. I don't know. I just. They are, by the way. Now, this is a little unfair because half the league, two thirds of the league has played seven games. The Vikings have played six games. The Vikings are 31st in rushing attempts. Let's say you give them, uh, you know, the extra game. Let's say you give them uh, 20 more rushing attempts. That would put them twenty fifth only. So even if you gave them the extra game and yeah, gave them twenty or thirty attempts, so they're they're like definitely that, like bottom five in the league in rushing attempts. Yes. But you remember how we talked before about how like everybody was worried the KOC was going to come here and there's going to be this complete offense that you know. And I had to talk to CJ Hammond. He was even worried that like I, the fullback's not going to be needed anymore. And I was like, CJ, this this team needs the run game. It needs the run game to be dominant. Like, this is what you guys are made up of. This is how you hide the blemishes up front. When things aren't working well in play action, okay, well, now we're really just going to hand it to Dalvin. Like, we're just going to let him cram it up in here. We're going to let him do different things. Dude, AQ Shipley just called me today. And he he's FaceTiming me because he wants to show me this play that Kyle Shanahan had run. And it was a play where Trent Williams pulled from the back side and he whammed the front side nose tackle. He was like, bro. Hold on. You just said wham the front side nose tackle. Football. Insane. He's sending that. it to me because we're going to pull it up. We're going to do another show this week. We're going to pull it up. I'm going to yeah, show please it. Yeah, please send that to me now that now but, that we are technologically savvy on this show. Yeah. Dude, like, but it just, you keep, you're looking around the league and at times I'm like, KOC, man, show me something. Show me something. We're week six. Show me something else. I don't want to see this anymore. I don't want to see so, the tight end block him. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a couple dumb sort of like retorts at you here because it's 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 hard because on one hand they're five and one. No, they're no, actually I'm not bad. they're the they're no, but the, but you're going down. This is this is self scouting week. Hey, it's the bye week. We're all you know, we're gonna go in the film cave and uh, you know players can go on vacation and stuff. Just don't get arrested. One guy failed at that test. It was Oli Udo, <laughs> of course. Uh, so, but like most most guys didn't get arrested during the bye week, which is good Wait. so far. You being serious? Oli Udo got arrested. Yeah. For what? He uh, he like followed a woman into a bathroom in a Miami nightclub and got creepy and it was it's a just it's a misdemeanor situation like just just You know what that is? That's called you're getting cut. You failed the test that you're not <laughs> supposed to fail. And dude, I can't even. I it would be an old lineman too, wouldn't it? Like we never never get in trouble. You don't ever hear about us getting in trouble. You know why? Because nobody cares about what we do. Nobody really likes us. You're, you're, you're like the it. most responsible no. position group. Right. Largely. We are. You're well, not quarterbacks are probably number one, and then maybe offensive linemen number two. I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to say old linemen are way more responsible because you would never hear about us in a nightclub in Miami ever. And here you go. Well, Brian, Mc, Brian McKinney once owed $400,000 to a nightclub in Miami. That was a so totally it, it does, it does happen. That was a totally different situation. We've all owed money to nightclubs. Okay. We, I'm not I'm not here to judge. We've all had a bookie once. I mean, uh, we're good. We're good, dude. Calm down. So, okay. So they're they're five and one, but, and, and I'll add this too. They are the highest scoring team in the final four minutes of each half. So there's some like right. there's some situational things that I love about this team. Like, oh, they yeah. they just they score points late in the half. They can dig themselves out late in the game if if the game wasn't going perfectly. Um, but you've hit on a couple things here. 
So the fact that they don't run the ball a lot relative to the rest of the league, and they're they're putting a lot more on Kirk. Right. And this reminds me a little bit of the 2018 season. You had you were gone by this point, uh, but uh, John D. Filippo came in and he was yeah. the offensive coordinator. And that. and he got fired like he got fired like <laughs> week ten or something. Zimmer Six. just said, "Get the hell yeah. out of here." And uh, it might have been yeah, I don't. It might have been like the second month early. of the season. Yeah. So, but his whole thing was. I'm going to maximize Kirk Cousins. I'm going to put the ball in his hands. We're going to run shotgun pistol more often than he has before. We're going to throw the ball. And they, I think they have one of the highest pass rates, you know, one of the lowest running rates in the NFL. And it didn't really work in part because maybe he wasn't a great offensive coordinator um, or communicator or whatever. But I don't know that putting it all on Kirk is the thing that makes him the most comfortable. I almost feel like, like I want an explosive passing game, but... I don't know that you're going to get the most explosive passing game out of Kirk without Dalvin Cook also being highly involved because he's Kirk's a great play action quarterback. Right. I mean, like if you look at his whole career, even this year, he's a great play action quarterback. So I think you're onto something. I, I don't think it needs to be all of a sudden Dalvin's running 30 times a game and he's going to no. you know get hurt or something. But they it feels like they've gotten a little a little Those away from yeah yeah. It's the thing that everyone was talking about. Are they going to get too far into pass happy land? And then what's going to happen? And it's like, yeah, you're winning and that's great. And things are happening. But at the same time, you could be destroying half these teams. Why are you not destroying? You know what I'm saying? Like you just, to me, they need more of a Dalvin presence out there. And I feel like if you could get him going more, the offense would just start clicking so much more because instead of having to sit back there, I feel like Miami was eventually sitting there, like kind of daring them like, yeah, sure. We'll just do simple coverage, and we'll keep everybody in the box, and yeah. we, we, we'll, we'll call your bluff. And eventually it's like, oh, man, just give it to him. Just give it to Dalvin and let him call our bluff. Let's see if anybody can tackle him. Like, just mm-hmm. keep sending him up the middle. Keep hammering these guys home. I mean, especially because when you have a right guard that's having a problem in the game, sometimes the best thing to do is give him a little fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, here's a little ammo for you. You're not always setting back. You're not always worried about what's behind you. Now you can instead go forward. You can go smash somebody else. Like, Get them running. Do things. I mean, it's just – at times it was like, man, I thought there'd be a little bit more to this. I don't know. Miami versus, you know, the Vikings. You got coach down there who's just all over the place with his offense. They got these guys running down every which seam. And then KOC, I was like, dude, I was expecting something to be a little innovative. Am I happy they won? Absolutely. Miami's a very tough team. I mean, people can say whatever they want. Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill on that offense, plus Mike Kosecki, dude, that's <laughs> – those seams are getting covered as much as possible, and they're still catching these balls. And you're like, yeah. dude, at the same time, you talk about moving forward, and like when you get to the playoffs, you're going to be playing even better teams. And, yeah, there's not a lot of good NFC teams, but let's not forget the Bills are still here. The Chiefs are still here. Like, I think the, we play the Bills this year, right? In three weeks. Yeah. Yes. In dude. Buffalo. Yes. There you go. Damn, You've kind of hit on, too, like – the one thing that you really need to see from this team, there's a few things, but – and this isn't just this year. This is this goes back. I would say, you know, in the Kirk Cousins era, go on the road against good teams, and it doesn't happen very often that they win those games. Like, right. like they 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 won the Saints playoff game on the road in 2019, and then they got smoked by the 49ers the next week in the divisional yeah. round. But you can count on less than one hand for sure how many how many times they've gone on the road against a good winning team, prime time or whatever it is. So the Eagles are the only team so far this year. I mean, that Dolphins game, that's a tough road game, but they're also starting their third-string quarterback, so it wasn't quite the full experience. Still. It's a, it's a good win. All you got to do is throw that ball in the air, and Tyreek Hill just finds it. Like, I don't even know how you could lose any games at that point. Like, literally, <laughs> hey, whoever's back there, just catch the ball and throw it that way as far as you can. He'll get right under it. It's Okay. He's ridiculous. Yes. And we're insane. Uh, but the only two games on your schedule, road ga- road games against rock solid or, you know, playoff contender opponents, the Bills in three weeks, and then your only other road games after that are Lions. You get Packers on New Year's Day and Bears. So, like, you'll probably, you know, if depending on where the Packers are at at that point, and by the way, they have to play at Buffalo this week. They're going to be underdogs. They might be three and five and totally screwed. But you've only got a couple chances to show. Can you go on the road and go toe to toe with a team like the Bills? Right. I want to see them ramp up to that in three weeks. And they could. I don't see any way why they couldn't. Honestly, this is one, of, like, especially when you think about feeling out there too like I feel like at times he he gets kind of slept on because there aren't that many opportunities but there's so many times where I see him wide open and I'm like dude there are 
when they start clicking on offense, to me, they'll be able to run the ball effectively, efficiently. People are just going to be like trying to load the box as much as they can. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you spread them out, they're not going to know what to do. And you'll see it more. And it's, I think a lot of it too was early on, there was pressure in the, in the middle. And you know how I feel about that. Like when a quarterback's got a lot of pressure in the middle, some of these quarterbacks don't respond really well. There were some balls that were thrown that were a little bit sketchy again. And you're like, dude, what's going on? He's throwing this ball way over his head. But he's still getting peppered all the time. And it's one of these things where let's get him back into a comfortable position. If we're going max protection and he's still getting hit, we need to run the ball. We're officially back to step one, okay, guys? Like We can't throw any more people. We can't run a one-man route. That's not physically possible. <laughs> people are going to laugh at us. So it, so it sounds like like – so Thielen's 32 years old. He's probably not the same guy he was four or five no, years ago. No, he's not, because his blocking has gone down. Did you okay. see that play where he came in to block that safety, Thielen? No, you're better than that. You deserve Which play are you talking about? It was like in the first quarter. It was like one of the first series. They were down back by their own end zone, and he motioned him in to come in, and the guy just came in, and he was, was like, dude, I know Thielen better than that. Mm -mm. Has he, to what extent has he, I think just to back up a step, I thought on paper going into the year, I said, man, the Vikings wide receiver group, Justin Jefferson's one of the two or three best in the NFL. Easily. Thielen, when healthy, is generally one of the 15 best receivers, especially red zone, route running, third down, et cetera. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then let's say Thielen takes a step back because of his age and injuries and stuff. Boy, K.J. Osborne could just kind of jump right up there as a number two. It doesn't feel, and this is where you have to tell me, is it because of the personnel or is it something with – just the the offense hasn't peaked yet. It doesn't feel to me like they have an amazing number two wide receiver threat yet on this team. It feels like they've got Justin Jefferson and then some other guys that they're trying to figure out how to get the ball to more consistently if they can't get it to Jefferson. Why can't why can't they get the ball to a number two wide receiver? I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know. I'm watching him in play action, and I'm watching Thielen come wide open looking for the ball, and the ball doesn't get thrown. I mean – if I were to guess, my best guess was we expected Thielen to have a huge year because we were like, okay, well, everyone's going to go cover Justin Jefferson. And with this new explosive offense, yeah. you know, Thielen's going to be running free. K.J. Osborne's going to be running free. And Irv Smith Jr. is going to be running free. Like, this is going to be what it is. And we just haven't seen that yet. And I think that a lot of us are kind of like, dude, what's going on? What's the problem? And I, I personally know what the problem is. At times we have problems protecting. And when we have problems protecting, we have to throw other guys up there to help do things. Like, and that's when, like, this last week, when you look at Miami, at times they can be really reckless and they can do things that you're like, wow, defensively, they got a lot of guys up there. They just don't care. But they're well disciplined. Like, they're coached well. They get what they do for as much exotic stuff as they throw. They play it really well. Like, they have good coverages. They know where they're supposed to be. And so I'm looking at this like, okay, the play action game makes a lot of sense. Would I be doing it this much? No. And I think that's where I'm like, when are you going to spread it out? When are we going to see this offense from last year that everybody was like, oh, my God, nobody can cover anybody. Everybody's wide open all the time. And instead, it's like, well, if Justin Jefferson doesn't have a day, boy, it's going to get ugly. It's going to we're going to have to see what happens. You know, can Kirk do the whole day? Is Dalvin going to run the ball? Like, it's just it, there's just been no continuity, in my opinion. And yeah. I'm not saying it's like the end of the world because it's not. They're five and one. And that's crazy to think that we're still talking like this and they're five and one, right? That's why to me, it's like they could make a very deep run in the playoffs because all these things, it's really just them going, okay, well, maybe we sprinkle in a little bit more of this, or maybe we do a little bit more of this. Maybe we yeah. spread these guys out this way. It's not like, man, we need a whole new receiving core. We need a new quarterback. Like how many, how many teams right now have legendary quarterbacks on their team that are like, boy, I'll take the backup over this guy right now. Right. I mean, and we're just over here, like just, I just want to see them spread them out a little bit. I just want to see what happens when they start daring people to cover you. I dare yeah. you to cover these five guys and still try and pressure these five at the same time. Your move, big dog. Now we're playing chess, not checkers. Like this yeah. is where the intellect comes up. And that's how do you do that? That's the thing. Like they're they're in such a great spot because they're five and one and have all of this room to get better. Like, like this is one of the worst statistical seasons of Kirk Cousins' career so far. So he's like he there's another level to his game right? in this offense and they're but I would take the team wins over the individual back of the football card stats of his career to this point uh, any day of the week. Um, let's get to the dumb football question here where I or an audience member poses a football. dumb football <laughs> question. And Professor Boone answers it here. This one's from listener Shane. 
And uh, by the way, I should shout out this uh, dumb football question presented by our friends at St. Thomas Football Division One for the second year atop the Pioneer League. And uh, they take on the University of San Diego this Saturday, 12 noon at O'Shaughnessy Stadium. Uh, that game is on 1500 ESPN Radio here in the Twin Cities. The Tommies are 4-0 and and pushing for a conference championship in their second year as a D1 team. Uh, tickets, $15. Go to TommySports.com to buy your tickets today. Um, so here's the dumb football question. Do it. So teams generally script the first however many, you know, 10, 15 plays of 13. the game. The Vikings offense struggles in the third quarter, which, by the way, they've scored six points in the third quarter this season, like mm-hmm. all season. It's mm-hmm. a thing. Uh, should the Vikings consider scripting second half plays? No. Second half plays come from uh, adjustments at halftime. So you basically go out in the first half and then the first 15. And I should preface it this. The fact that you would run all of those in sequence is very rare, right? Like something always happens around 9 or 10 where you start getting off script because as an old lineman, you memorize all those, especially when you're starting to look, what's the first thing you want to see? Better not be a pass, right? I don't want the first play to be a pass. Because, like, you just don't. I need that first hit. A waggle is a great way to start a game. A duo, a power. You can't mess <laughs> oh, these up, right? A, a waggle, waggle to start the game is what I always Giro, call for. I swear to God. <laughs> Give me a waggle. Out. They found out that we didn't like to pass the ball the first play because it just made us a little jittery. And so, like, Giro okay. was – I know. It was, he couldn't believe it. So, like, he put for, like, the next four weeks, like, every first play was a pass play. Just to, play, like, rile us up. <laughs> we went to Denver. We ended up running, like, a four-shift motion pass play. And I was like, God, this is just even worse because you're sitting in your stance and they're all, like, puffing and puffing. And But when you so, do but, that, but how does that work? Like, so I would think that let's say that this is – here's a dumb football question on top of the dumb football question. Let's say the first play is a pass play and yeah. the second play is scripted as a run play. But yeah. you get sacked for an eight-yard loss on first down, and now it's second down and 18, and maybe you feel like you have to throw the ball because the circumstances changed. See? Is it a, is it a list of flexible order? No. no. It's a list. It's this is QB it's sneak to... is the seventh play, damn it, on this chart. It it's third be. and 20. We're running a QB sneak right now. No, that's why I'm saying like the fact that you would run those perfectly in order is very, very rare because, like you just said, all of a sudden, second down, somebody gets flagged for holding. So you're in third and 20 instead. And now you're like, okay, well, we're definitely not running that three step, right? All of a sudden, the seven step, all the Mustang, right? You're like, God, dang. really? You had to hold them? Great job, dude. This could have been our waggle. Dude, that used to drive me nuts. Like, you'd be like, oh, this is the waggle play. And so you think, hey, you want to know what we talk about in the huddle? We'll be sitting there like, yo, this is supposed to be the waggle. Let me see. Come here. Waggle? Waggle? Whoa, 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 whoa. Two jet. No, 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 no. He said waggle. <laughs> and you're looking around. <laughs> two, can you at least give me a three jet? No, two? <laughs> I'm screwed. I'm not ready for this. No, it's – um. so then you go through that. And then from there, the game's supposed to keep that rhythm, right? Like there'll be a rhythm to it. Uh, you know, whether we're stretching them this way, stretching them that way, we hit them up the middle, then we come back with the same type of play action. When you go in at halftime, it's all those plays on the board. And then some of them will have like X's through them. Like this play is getting thrown out. This play is getting thrown out. So if you try to script the second half before the first half happens, you've really thought it out way too much. And you're going to guess a lot wrong because a lot of plays that you think are going to work. I mean, there could have been a million plays that I was like, this is going to hit so awesome. Just wait. I would tell my friends, I'd be like, dude, somewhere in the first quarter, it's going to be awesome. And it just wouldn't work. And you'd be like, why didn't it work? And it gives you so many outside factors you don't expect. The cornerback ended up coming. The safety ended up blitzing off the edge. The mic didn't read the running back the way he was supposed to. So all of a sudden they go in at halftime and they're like, hey, this great, great play that we practiced 800 times this week. Yeah, throw it away. All right. Remember that play from week one? You don't? <laughs> what are you, stupid? <laughs> you'd be like, I do. I We're running it play. on every snap in the second half now. So no, they they pull some stuff out like this. They'd be like, "Hey, remember that play from week? It'd be like week twelve. They go, "Hey, remember that play from week one and that other one from week three? We're gonna combine them. All right, so you're gonna run the front <laughs> side of week one, the back side of week three. You got it, right? Sure. Don't look stupid. All right, here we go. And then you'd be talking to your friends. Like, hey, do you remember what you talking about? What's what he talking about? about? What I blacked I out know. week four. Yeah. Right? Giro's offense had 400 plays. You're like, which one, dude? Which one? Quick, talk to me. Which one are we talking about? Is that the one where I got? Do I got that one? I do. Are you sure? I can't ask. Like, imagine can being I like a rookie, that? too. I'm thinking like poor Ed Ingram is just trying to retain all this stuff, too. Yeah, that hey, would be. Uh... Mad kudos to, to Ingram for stepping in there. I, I mean, I honestly, 
there's times where he kind of gets pushed around. He is a rookie. And there are times that he does look really, really good. Now, there are times he gets out of position. He's still a rookie. You have to expect that. And that's why, at times, I understand why they're doing this match protection. We still have to protect the guy back here. and We still need to give him options. But at some point, it's like, dude, spread them out. Do what you do best. You have the weaponry to go out here and have fun. Spread Dalvin out there. See who tries to cover him. Who? I mean, if you go five wide, the middle of the field – should be wide open, and you just let everybody run upfield, and then you just run across or right across. Keep it simple, man. Just whoop, and so you're yes. thinking, you're thinking with Dalvin too. It's less about necessarily handing him the ball. It's just getting, it's getting him the ball in different ways. I mean, he's only. I feel like he's on pace for like a career low in catches this year too. I, I thought he'd be more involved in the short passing him. game. Yeah, I just don't see him enough. I don't see him out there dropping his shoulder in a defense. Like, I don't feel like the defense fears the offense like they used to. Like, dude, there was times, and as a player, I could see it the way the defense was playing. They were just like, please, God, give it to anybody but that guy. Give it to anybody but that one guy. And then they would hand it to him, and you would see cornerbacks, like, shy away. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe I missed that tackle. Oh, no. But they were like, I want no part of that. Now everybody's stepping up in the box, and they're like, well, they don't even run it, so they must not be effective at it. So uh, this guy must not be tough anymore can we it's, do our first play can we do our first film review here because you're you're going right into we i gotta show this to you this is where this is this is where alex cracks his neck Dude, puts on um, some soothing smooth jazz in the background so, dims no, the I'm lights watching, i'm watching some old school seattle highlights i am so excited walter jones is right there crushing somebody so here's what we have here i'm going to pull this up for the and, and by the way if you're listening on spotify or apple uh, this is like the 30-some minute mark here. This is where you would go to the YouTube channel and, and take a look at this. So this right here, I'm going to run this from two different angles for you. This is a 53-yard touchdown run by Dalvin Cook. Mm-hmm. Now, going into this game, I think his longest run of the season was 16 yards. So this was this was the home run that we've been waiting for for a month and a half from the offensive line, from Dalvin. The uh, The behind angle will give you... Probably more of a view here, but I'm going to run this. Let's just watch the play here real quick so people can kind of see it. All right, boom. Dalvin takes a handoff, waits for everything to develop. There's a mishmash of 300-pound men. He emerges from it, and boom. He's gone off to the races for a touchdown. And then once we get to this point, this probably gives you a better view here because it's a little bit more zoomed in from behind the all-22. This is where... I'm just going to turn over to you here. And you I'm kind of springing these plays on you because I think yeah. it's more fun that way. But when I watch this as just an amateur, you know, fat guy on a couch watching football, I see I don't know how he emerges from this pile of humanity. <laughs> like like let's roll this quick here. All right, so first we got an under front, have five true down linemen, which is a little interesting. Okay. But notice how the safety's down in the box, so you got to sup Safety's up. Get it? Sup? <laughs> there you go. Is that him right sup, there? Dude. Did I circle yeah. the right guy? Okay. You're supposed to look at him and go, sup, dude. All right. So you're putting hamster on the uh, strong safety. We used to call this boss. So this would be called 97 boss. Get it? Back on strong safety. Boom. You got it. Front side, we're slipping to 52. Some people call it a double. Uh, tight end is always blocking alone. This game, he was not good. Come on. You owe me something. This is 52 uh, right here, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, backside, we're going to A1. But see how he's in a three technique? you got to kind of throw a little something for that tackle. That's a tough block. So you're A1 in almost kind of a gang, but the center's got to get through here. So let's see what they do. Okay. We're going to roll this slow here. Yeah, yeah. Cover one. <laughs> All right. First off, so one more step. Center, got to get some love on me, dude. Center, got to get some love. Go back a little bit. Take it back a little bit. See right here? Center's got to get a little love on that shoulder. You got to turn that nose tackle. Left so tackle. he did. So so Bradbury kind of blew by him. He yeah, should've... and you don't. And listen, when I say this, nobody's ever meaning to not block somebody. It all happens really, really fast. And he probably thought I got to get through here because see how tight he is on him. That guy could just grab Bradbury, and then the backside linebacker runs through. They do it all the time. But number one, I would say Hamster does a great job of getting through this tight end block. Like, this is what he's okay. supposed to do. And this so is the audience. Kind of, here's CJ Ham just watching here. Yeah. the uh, This has kind of become a new thing. It's a double team with the tight end and the fullback, but the fullback's off, right? So you kind of tell him just go in there and ram through it. But he's got to get a little bit more. Come on, get through there. The slip looks good. I don't like how Ezra Cleveland finishes that. So Ezra Cleveland kind of gets actually kind of gets shoved aside here. And yeah. if you stop it right here, 
Do you think it's so? This high? is and again for the audio audience. This is he is Dalvin Cook is right now. He is at the uh, the forty seven yard line with three Miami Dolphins defenders either next to him or one that's in front of him, and only Ed Ingram. They're surrounding him. Like, does this at all look like it's about to be a fifty three yard touchdown run? Because to me, I'm I'm shocked. No, and not at all. And look, you see what the problem becomes backside too. See how when we don't get this backer blocked, like as long as you get that guy blocked, you can try and make enough guys on the on the front side miss because you're expecting them to continue running with. Are you, you talking about like, this guy right here? Which guy are you talking about? Can you see on the, the screen guy here? number one, the guy that's right to the right of Dalvin? Gotcha. That's the linebacker. Mm-hmm. Ed Ingram eventually got the nose tackle. See that arm? That's a great arm right there by Ed. See, that's why I said he doesn't do everything bad. This is great. See how he makes that cut right there? Yeah, yeah, Delvin runs through this guy right here, which is phenomenal. This backside linebacker doesn't really have a good angle, but Ed Ingram makes this play right here. See that right there where he stops him? Kind of that's gives beautiful. him that little bit of force to get through there. And he's doing it. He's just kind of on the run with he's just stiff right. arming him with it's, his right arm, right? It's actually kind of great because as you're running, you're kind of leaning into him. So it's kind of naturally slowing you up and you're feeling oh. his pace. I know, right? Look, and then you just make this. one cut. Look at this cut by Dalvin right here. Yeah, I'm telling you. Look at this, this poor guy just breaks both what? ankles of number eight here. Oh, Pretty God. good for wearing number eight. Let's cross out these ankles right here. These are both. That's injury report right there. Look at this. And he's coming in from a decent angle, right? I mean, no, it's. Not. Look at him, right? I mean, well, no, you're 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 way off, dude. You're way off. <laughs> you are way. What's off. he supposed to do here? Where's he supposed to go? He's the last right. line of defense. I mean, Theo's up here blocking. It looks like he's already here. slow. Look, he's already slowing up. You just go in there like your camp chancellor, full speed, and try and take somebody out. It's not hard. Yeah. I'm trying <laughs> God, to slow up way too fast. But this this whole mishmash thing. You see how much work he had to do <laughs> to get through all this? It doesn't have to be that hard. Uh, he's a great player. He should have way more yards than he does. He's gone. So you're uh, so this isn't the greatest job of creating a hole, but enough for a great running back with great cutting ability. Like and Ed Ingram with a nice finish. Stop. See that hole right there? That's how the hole should look the whole time. Yes. See how see how Ingram has exactly what he wants. He's got his arm on his chest. He's pushing him back. He's creating that lane. That's why they tell you this backside guard and center or backside guard and tackle. You guys are the ones that create these lanes that cut back. Because look at everybody front side. They've all been running to the front side. Whatever we do, we can't let them get to this edge. Great. You guys run this way. Ed, you cut it off here. Bradbury, damn it. You can't cut them, but you got to block them. Because when this guy comes down here, it scares running backs. That's my cut right there. But I see that flash of white coming backside. And that kind of spooks him. But here it ends up pushing him front side, which ends up working out really well. God, look at this. I mean, this is this is just – look how slippery he is through here. Dude. Just 90, 92, and, I had no idea. And gone. Please tell me you have more. In the end zone. Um, I actually have a couple things for you here. I'm just going to oh, pull this no. out here. We're just going to – we're gonna okay. go kind of on the fly here for the audience. Okay. Um, I want to show you. Let's let's do let's do a passing play here that that was not a good result for the Vikings. And um, this is not <laughs> to, not to pick on Bradbury Ingram necessarily, but I just I'd love for you to explain sort of what happens here on a play that goes awry and almost becomes a safety. Okay. All right, we're on a loaded look. Cover one. Uh, it's a loaded look because you see how there's a guy over Bradbury, 93, and then there's two guys to the right of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have an overload to that side, right? So you have an overload of guys. And then that guy standing over Ezra is a linebacker. So you're basically, you're taunting that guard with the linebacker. And a lot of times that guy won't come because instead of pulling the protection over four guys to three, which is really good. We always want to do that. We just want to solidify all these gaps and let Dalvin step up here. A lot of times now, and towards the end of my career, people always just said, hey, let's just take care of everybody up front and we'll get Dalvin out as an extra guy, as an extra threat. So assuming that they play with everyone else's rules, I'm going to say that this is a 5-0 before they start. Okay. Let's see if we get a hand or a fist. What are we looking for? And it's clearly cover one because, look, everybody's manned up across the board. Is this a silent just... snap count here too because oh, yeah, Ezra Cleveland's sure. looking over his shoulder? For sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. This is, I believe, this is a third down here too. So shadow, and for the for the audio audience, we're breaking down six yard line, Kirk Cousins shotgun formation. 
All right, ball snapped. All right. All right, so it's not going to be really good. By the way, it ends up being covered too. I like that. Go ahead. Go to the end zone. It'll be a lot easier to explain. All right, here we go. We, we don't really watch. o linemen don't watch it from the sideline. We watch from here. All right, so you got your 5-0 situation, right? 29-21. From right now, it looks like 29's got Dalvin, and it looks like 21 has um, Irv Smith. So let's see what happens. Okay. We go 5-0. As an old lineman, if I'm thinking the situation off the top of my head, what am I thinking? Get off the ball because everybody's going to move. Nobody's just going to rush five guys straight down the front of you. Like, that's stupid. That's a waste of a rush. Somebody's moving somewhere. Oh, instantly I'm seeing the nose guard going somewhere. Where's he going? Mm. Mm. Go back. All right. So I see how I said 55 is not so really right here doing for anything. The These are the guys you want to watch right here. Yeah, see how 55 is not doing anything? He's baiting Ezra because if he were to drop for it right away, Ezra would probably kick to the left because I would and always it, kick to my tackle. So Ezra, takes, Ezra, kicked, Ezra kicked to our left. If he if 55 backs away, Ezra then goes over here and helps. Is that what, That's what you're saying? Depends on who you like more. Do I like Bradbury more <laughs> than I like Derrissaw? I know, really. I mean, in the game, in your mind, you should always have a plan, and this is where guys are not prepared, and this is what's lacking in football nowadays is nobody's prepared for plan B. Plan A is never going to work. Why? Because it's football. You're playing against a live human, and he has thoughts too, and he's doing football. crazy wild things that don't add up, right? <laughs> So all of a sudden they get to plan B and they're like, well, where do I go? And they end up just sitting in the middle. But my thought process was always who's the better rusher and who is in the worst mindset right now. Is my center having a harder time or is my tackle? If my tackle's having a harder time, then I'm going to get out to him. And I'll always let the center know I'm going left. If he drops, if the center's having a hard time, I would have let my tackle know I'm going in. If he drops, don't expect me. Kind of feels like, like, I mean, dumb, dumb football guy comment here again, but like, Derrissaw has had a great start to the season. And so if ever given the chance to to help to your left or to your right, if you're Ezra Cleveland, wouldn't, oh, you're you, going right. <laughs> wouldn't you likely be helping Garrett Bradbury, right? No, no, I'm kidding. It would depend. If this was a very known pass rusher, I'd be like, Derrissaw, I'm in your back pocket the whole day. But so you're saying how, this, so this looks, d- I'm going to ask takes, another one here. This he, th- so you're saying that this, this is, they're disguising this to look like cover one with 29 on Dalvin. Well, before the pre-snap, he was down on this line, and he was right Mm -hmm. in front of Dalvin. And if you go back to the other copy, it looks like – and some people say this, and they misuse this term all the time. It kind of looks like a fence look, and a fence look is when everyone's on the same line and they look like posts in a fence. But this kind of looks like a fence look with cover one behind it. See the safety in the middle? Yeah, back here you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you okay. and now if you take him out of this, it looks like it's zero. But then at the last second, see how 29 is starting to drop out? And really 55 is on Dalvin. Right. All of a sudden, oh, yeah, see? And so now you go from man coverage, which it looks like man one, to now you're kind of in the zone. And so that's how they mess with you as a quarterback. So now Kirk has to know, hey, I'm in my zone. And Cleveland is left kind of looks like helping there, nobody. Looks because... like two, man. Mm. So, yeah, what happens here, go back. He, he really doesn't have a choice, Kirk, though, right? because the problem is 55 takes a step up. That one step has to hold you. Because now what they do is they'll take this step and they'll pretend to drop and then they come again. Like it, there's always another step. Macadac, I know. Like you think you got him, and then the next game they show you a drop and the guy comes through the A gap. You're like, okay, I've never seen that. I don't know where this is coming from. So now you have to respect him. And you can tell when he's not coming because he kind of looks you in the eyes and laughs a little bit like I got you. But over here on the le- on the right, their right, our left. Here's the problem. Go back. By the way, Derrissaw is incredible. I love him. He's very good at football. Yeah. He's phenomenal. If I'm the right guard, I'm setting back. I have to have a hand. See that inside hand right there? See how it's not really feeling anything in here? You use that hand to see the inside. I have to you're, look at 15 the whole you're time. Talking about, you're talking about that this right here? That hand right there. We call that the feeler hand. This big Keep that hand right in. Number one, get a little tighter split, okay? you're re- Tighten your split up. Two, get off the ball more. The more depth you have off the ball, the more you have to recover things like this and pick this up. Because when you set real tight like this, you're not very far off the ball. And look how close he is to you. And now he's in your hip and you have no hand on him. And now look, Bradbury's trying to fight him over to you. He should be more extended snapping him. And now Ed just figured out just now, oh, it's a twist. You should know right now. He's not 15 not rushing the ball hard. That's that's clear and obvious. This dude's got his hand in the ground on a probably third down situation. That's a 5-0 and he's not rushing hard. Something's up. They're not spying Kirk. Right. What I will say is this. 
Bradbury does a great job, hear me, does a great job of trying to take two here. It's extremely hard in the game to try and block two guys because you're like trying to figure out who's the bigger threat while you're trying to stop yourself from going backwards. And oh, by the way, the guy with the ball is standing right behind me in the end zone, right? Like I don't put any of this on him at all. I think Ed needs to get off the ball. He needs to have more presence of what's going on around him. Understand people are going to attack you because you're young. They don't think you're ready because stuff like this still happens. See how like Ezra kind of has his hand out there right away. He kind of, he kind of throws it. So he's, he's like punching with his right hand right away. Just putting little feelers out. You don't want to punch with your inside. You just want to kind he's of punching with his left hand. You're saying, yeah, it's a bad comparison, but it's, you want to look when he sets, he kind of throws his hand up right there. Yeah. That's how you kind of, if I were, if I were Ed Ingram, that's how I would set. You throw your hand out there so that 93 just kind of comes to it. I don't know why it happens or how it does it. They just magically come to that hand and you just kind of grab them and pull them. It works Aww. every time. Like D Lyman will be like, what'd you do there? You're like, dude, I do anything. Literally, you just came right to this hand and I just moved you over. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's a real calm effect. There's a giant magnet inside my glove, actually. I don't know what's going. It's a it's a what is that? A donut? There you go. No. What it is is you're feeling with your left, but you're looking to your right. So you're yeah. constantly like, what's over here? I know something's here. And the minute I start to feel something, I have to figure out what that is as I'm reading what you're doing. And the minute you start to slow down in front of me, I should be thinking in my head, why are you slowing down? If anything, this guy should be all gas, no brakes. He's slowing down. He's moving somewhere. So right here. Switch. First of all, this, this switch, feels switch, switch. like. Okay. Switch. You have to. But Bradbury's got to be more extended. See how he's not giving him anything? He's allowing 93 into his chest, which then allows him into Ed Ingram's chest. Because if you create separation, you give Ed a little bit of a chance here to maybe, especially if you give him a snap. Coach Solari, you say all the time, as you throw your hands, you got to snap it. It's a legit jolt that you send them to kind of push them over. And they just end up flying because they're so big and they're so not good at being pushed to the side when they're moving forward. Like, it's just not something they're good at. Yeah. This also, this is a great example too of like, you know, Kirk Cousins is screwed if this happens. Mm -hmm. There's nothing he can do to salvage this play, and it's not his fault. Right? I mean, he was just he wasn't born with Lamar Jackson's legs or Josh Allen's legs, or so. This is such great evidence of interior pressure. But like, when a guy like me is watching this play. It's easy when you're watching this and it plays out fast, right? You're watching it's like, oh my God, Garrett Bradbury got blown off the ball again. Classic Garrett Bradbury. But the way that you lay this out, it seems like a great defensive play design for one by Miami at the right time. Uh, Garrett Bradbury is, is holding as much water as he possibly can in this situation. And, and maybe, maybe if you had a mobile quarterback, if you had Kyler or Lamar or Josh Allen – maybe he scoots out and gets away a little bit and gets out over here and makes a play of it. But it's just like, you can't make a play out that. of this. If you're Kirk, I don't think anybody could really make a play out of that. It yeah, happens you're probably so right. fast. And not only that, dude, you forget pressure from the outside is so much different than pressure up the middle. When you feel like you can't step up, that's when they freak. Yeah. Right. Like I want to be able to step up into my pocket. I want to be able to be comfortable here. When you just catch the ball and two guys show up, you're like pure panic mode. Dude, that was uh, that was great. Those are the only two I have for you for for today. But I got some other stuff in my files here. But maybe we'll do another episode this week. And what do you mean? Maybe we'll do another episode. Bust a few more. We're definitely doing another okay. episode. Okay. I'm excited. I'm excited, Phil. Talk to me. Uh, who do you want to fire this week? I am so ready to fire somebody. Can I can I actually start? Because I think I think Please I do. I kind of I think I know kind of where you're going based on our text messages. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna tee you up for this one a little bit, mm -hmm. or maybe maybe we're gonna contrast here. But Mac Jones, first round pick, benched for Bailey Zappi, Western Kentucky, fourth round draft pick. Uh, Matt Ryan was benched this week for Sam Ellinger, Ellinger, the Texas quarterback who was like a sixth round pick. No. Uh, Carson Wentz likely benched for Taylor Heineke. Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers both were given bags of money before the season and are both largely having some of the worst performances of their career. And so who is who I want fired? You're Pretty much everyone who's in charge of evaluating quarterback play in the NFL. I mean, how badly are teams whiffing? Is it, is it really like 
Matt Ryan, could you not watch three years of film? And I was optimistic. Oh, maybe there's a Brett Favre resurgence in there somewhere. But, you know, it's not like Matt Ryan is magically going to be 31 years old anymore, right? It's uh, Carson Wentz isn't going to stop spazzing and throwing bad interceptions and fumbling and stuff. I just find it so fascinating how people devote their lives to watching film and evaluating players, and we still have largely no idea how to identify what a quarterback is going to do. It's yeah. mostly a flip of the coin. Yeah. I mean, there's a million people I want to fire right now. I mean, I could give you a list. I think I'm going to have to do this, and this is totally out of left field, and I'm going to get so much slack for it. We didn't do this last week, and I wanted to do it last week, and I wanted to do it the minute I heard it. I got to fire Tom. Okay? I got to. Oh, wow. Right. I'm going to be honest. I mean, his wife already fired him. <laughs> now you're just piling on now. No. I'm upset. You missed a walkthrough to go to a wedding. Like, at some point, this game has to mean more than some stupid ex-owner's wedding. You know what I'm saying? That, I mean, wedding this, pretty, that, that wedding looked pretty I don't fun, give a lie. shit if Beyonce was there singing. John Legend, go crazy on the piano, my dude. We got a game tomorrow. You're not here? Why is he I'm, still playing? I never thought I'd have what to What is do he this doing? He, he's becoming kind of an ass. I'm going to be honest. I, I'm a huge fan of all these respectful dudes. You know I am. I'm a f- biggest fan of all these guys. I told them to their face how much respect I had for them. To miss a walkthrough to go to a wedding, I find that very unconventional. And I don't care who says it. That's some bullshit. I never missed for anything. Dude, I missed my kids' births. I missed a ton of stuff. Because guys were like, hey, you're going to be here tomorrow, right, for the big day? No, nah, dude, I got to go to a wedding. <sighs> Man, it's going to be tough. I'll be here on Sunday, though. Don't worry. It's Pittsburgh. What could go wrong? I don't know if you saw the appetizer trays at that wedding, okay? If you did, if you saw some of the things they were wrapping in bacon, you might change your tune. No, it's sad, dude. People don't care about this game anymore. People that you thought would really care forever and ever and ever and would put their heart and soul into it. Like, I get that life happens, and I get that so many other things happen. Believe me, we were all there when things happened that we were like, hey, kind of busy. From August... Till hopefully February. Just can't do anything from August to February. From then on, I could do whatever you want me to do. I can miss any OTA you need me to. Hell, I could probably miss the preseason for 12 days if you need me to. Okay? I could. Right? Now, all of a sudden, people always ask me, why you get so mad at these guys? It's because at one point in time, like stuff like this would happen and you would get so mad because you would lose a stupid game and it would end up costing you later in the season. You'd be like, the whole season was ruined. Because of something so stupid that had nothing to do with this game. It's not like somebody gave up a safety in the big game or a sack fumble. I can live with that. I can live with, hey, we weren't just tough enough that day. What I can't live with is I got to go to a wedding, guys. I'll catch you tomorrow. Dude, (laughs) Carson Palmer. I'm going to tell you this story right now. Oh, man. I love this guy to death. To death. We're in London. We're playing the Rams. Dude fractures his forearm completely hanging out of his skin, right? Bone, nub, arms going this way, blood. He's like, yo, we're good, right? Here's what we do. We get away from 76. We go to 77 (laughs) protection. Tell them we need 77, okay? I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't, I can't think right now because there's a bone staring at me and you're talking all cool, right? Comes back. We ended up finishing the season in Seattle. Dude was on IR, had no business being there. It was his last year, was fading off in the sunset like a G. Night before the Seattle game, shows up, flew himself to the game because, like, the team wouldn't fly him or something. Flew himself to the game, got himself his own hotel room, took us all out to dinner, was like, I want you guys to know how much I cared about you all season, how much I loved you, how much you meant to me. I was like, dude, this guy has no business being here. And he flew all the way up here to chill with us. He's not even playing tomorrow. That's so cool. It's like, was I the only guy to realize that this guy has made like $400 million? And he doesn't need to be here right now. He could be on a yacht and he's going to chill with a bunch of ugly dudes in the middle of a sushi restaurant in Seattle where nobody knows who we are. 
love you that much more, my dude. Isn't like, that that's... amazing? Though? But like for 24 years or whatever, it's been 22 years. I mean, Tom Brady was was that guy more than yeah. anyone that's ever played football. And now, it, 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 but this is a new season. It's a new locker room. It's new head coach, new circumstances. And tell me, man, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And that is the truest thing I've ever heard, dude. There was never any reason or upside to play. Like I get, I get. Like what you'll tell me is, play and hang on to it as long no, as you can no, if you love it. No, I think when your wife is like, "Hey, man, I'm a little unhappy." At some point, it is still just a game, right? Like it's just a game. He's like, "Baby, I, I know, I know you're unhappy, but have you seen the division?" <laughs> Dude, you just lost the, to the, the Panthers. The, 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 <laughs> so we can okay. still get this thing. We can still we can still get this thing, baby. Just hold on. I know you. I know you've got the divorce lawyers lined up. Just but look at the She's Falcons like, are starting Mariota. I mean, come on, we're gonna come back. Oh, we're gonna fix this thing. Yeah, okay. As you can't even beat Baker Mayfield's team, and he's not even starting. My goodness. I mean, dude, it's just it's one of those things where it's hard to watch. You know, like Matt Ryan. You're watching him go downhill, which I think we all kind of saw that for a little while. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers, the way that it's just not working anymore and the more flustered he gets and the more it's like, my goodness, what's, I'm not going to put Carson Wentz up there. I'm sorry. I mean, well, he's not I, in that category. No, yeah. He's not like an MVP, God, no. but you know, it's just, it's weird because we never really said that about Peyton or Drew, you know what I'm saying? Like they were always just kept it together and they were, you know, and yet a lot of it is because maybe Tom's expressing himself a little bit more, but at times you're like, dude, Come on, enough, enough of the yelling, enough it, of the screaming. He's also made it. I think Tom, because he's forty-five, has made it hard for all of these other guys. Like Matt Ryan's thirty-seven, and Rogers is like thirty-eight, thirty-nine. He's made it really hard for those guys to know when their timeline is reaching the cliff. Right. Because everyone's like, "Well, wait a second. Like Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Any other generation of football, we might say, "Ooh, guy that got by on like turning." turning every play into like kind of an improvisational backyard play. Like, yeah, once he gets to his mid thirties, it's probably not going to be good anymore. But right. because Tom Brady is playing until he's 45, we're like, what's good. What, what's the matter? You're only 34. You know, Matt Ryan, you're only 37. You shouldn't you be this. That. But for 50 years, quarterbacks turned 36 and they weren't good anymore. Right. So I don't know. It's uh, if I'm, if I'm Tom Brady at this point, I probably just go to the uh, $400 million broadcast check and try and save my marriage. But uh, I'm not here to I know. pass too I much just, judgment anyways. The crazy part is we're not even halfway through the year. Yeah. They could turn it around easily. It's just, yeah, I guess we just never thought we would see Tom in this light. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody always assumed it would be like, man, just great glory forever. And now it's like, what could be your last season is just turning to straight turmoil. I mean, your head coach was like, we're in a dark place. I've never heard a coach we're be like, we're in a dark, dark place. Is that even if I was in that locker room, I'd be like, he's lying. He's <laughs> lying. We're not. We're not in a dark place. Because you know what happens next? And this, I'm going to tell you, is the worst thing you'll ever hear. A players only meeting. Oh, we call yes. the players only meeting. I, I remember all the players only meetings, right? My first year, I was like, yeah. We do need to talk to ourselves and all the old guys yeah. are like, right? You're like, yeah, we do need to talk about this. The old guys are like, oh, uh, listen, where are we going on vacation? Huh? Where do you want to go? Yeah, probably uh, January 14th we'll be there for sure. I'm like, dude, it's week three. Like, dude, players only meetings are the worst. That means everyone's just giving up. You know, you guys come in and they're like, what's it going to take to give a little more? And you're like, wait a minute. Aren't we all getting paid for this? Give a little See, more. See, I, th I feel like fans hear about players only meetings. It's like, yes, finally, all right, this, is, this is the come to Jesus meeting that, terrible. that, that we all terrible. needed. No, because you know what it is? It's always the guy that's messing up who gets in front of everybody. He's like, you know what? Just takes a little bit more. And you're like, wait, didn't you drop those four passes the last game? <laughs> Dumbass. <That guy. laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. See, this is the finger pointing that gets us into a loss. I'm like, no, it's your drops that get us into a loss, especially in the red zone. Could have been better. Guy. Guy. Yeah. Amazing. Well, uh, that's a wrap on this episode of Trenches with Boone. Yeah. Brady fired all quarterback evaluators fired. Uh, I, I actually think we have we have fired Nathaniel Hackett multiple times already this season. I think if they lose in London this weekend to the Jaguars, I legitimately yeah, sure think gone. he's going to get fired. I mean, and then dude. you trade a first-round pick and triple the salary of Sean Payton. He's not going to leave broadcasting this year. I think he's having a good time. But you get him in there as soon as you can. No, you definitely – and I, you saw I sent you that, right? 
He was over been, there. I, like, yes, I've been you, you saw exactly what he weeks. said. I, I know. It. I know exactly how to take care of Russell Wilson. I would go back and look at his thirty best plays from Seattle. Oh, was it that simple, Sean? Why don't you go do it? Wait a minute. This is how we get in trouble last time. Now Sean's in the Broncos. Russ is out there. Things are crazy. Tom's part owner. Wait a minute. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Let's get it. Uh, you can uh, click that subscribe button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. We're almost to 30,000 subs on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. And if you have ideas for plays that you want Boone to break down and foam at the mouth as he... We're yeah, let us know. Week. Fire it up. We're probably going to do something midweek, maybe like a Wednesday special for uh, for a Thursday morning release to play some catch-up. So, uh, t- so hit us up. If there's questions you have that you think are dumb football questions, send them over via the Scorner Earth app or, uh, or just... Throw them in my my Twitter DMs can, and we can, can uh, bring can them to the show. Can we throw in like an advanced segment? I want to hear some advanced questions. I want to know how advanced sure. you guys are. Send your send your dumb questions and send what you think are advanced questions. And then Alex can grade you on how advanced it actually right. is and then explain it to us in a in a way that we probably don't comprehend or understand. But but we're here for it. Yeah. No more like, hey, what's a nickel defense? Can't we can't do that anymore. We got I we actually get have a, a I have a couple – I have a football lifestyle question that I want to bust out at some point that I think will lead to a fun just discussion. But we'll, I'm ready to go. I, no, we got we to gotta go now. It's been an hour. <laughs> People's attention spans – well, we're going to leave it for, for one of the next couple episodes. I have a fun football lifestyle question that I will, I will throw at you. But uh, so All right, that's Alex. I'm Phil. Between the two of us, we've played in the Super Bowl in over 10 years in the National Football League. Football! Right. Yeah! Football! See you guys.